Well, I'm John Leeson, and um, I was the first actor to play Bungle, Bungle Bear. So how about that? Uh, Fifty episodes, I'm told. That was uh, that was hot work, extremely hot work. Though, what was quite interesting about that, though, is that the audience, I think, became fewer and fewer, less and less, because Bungle looked so fierce. He looked uh, really quite frightening. So they decided to change the costume and make Bungle look very much more like a teddy bear, which was lovely, fantastic. However, same problem remained. I had to get inside that suit and my, well, the, the lead guy, David Cook, um, we, we sparred together as, as, as Bungle and the presenter. David Cook didn't have to get into this costume, but I was getting slimmer and slimmer and slimmer because the heat inside the bungle costume was just ridiculous and they had to give me salt tablets in order to keep me going. Now nowadays I think the uh, the health regulations would be such that I'd no longer be allowed to play bungle. Uh, not that I was seen at all my own face. All you saw was uh, me well, you saw the outside of Bungle, but uh, I think that the producer, Pamela Lonsdale, I think it probably was, if I re recall, um, she, was, she was very good. She kept us all going, and uh, basically half of the, the dialogue we had, we had to make up, because I, I couldn't read any scripts through the little eyes that were in Bungle's uh, head. So uh, it, it was improvised to a certain extent, as you can imagine. Now I'm just trying to think how I possibly got cast to be playing Bungle Bear. Um, I have no notion at all. Um, I have no remembrance of being sort of tried and tested and auditioned for playing this uh, this cuddly creature. Um, but it happened and of course as a young actor it was work. Uh, th there was a paycheck at the end of it and that was very important. <laughs> Of course, the other partner in the setup was Peter Hawkins, very distinguished actor who played Zippy. So it was something like that. Zippy! Uh, was a great guy, fantastic, very, very, very good actor. Uh, well, and as indeed uh, was, was David Cook, for that matter. So <laughs> we were a team, absolutely a team. And I was the only invisible one, being wrapped up in this in this fur coat, so to speak. Working with David Cook was fine. I mean, the partnership was a solid one. Fantastic. I mean, he was David Cook. He wasn't playing any other character than himself. And he was basically the lead uh, through the storylines uh, uh, of each episode and um, we got on like a house on fire you know we were just a team with uh, Pamela our producer um, guiding us all doing the voice of Bungle um, was sort of taking the, the voice up a tone and sounding sort of a bit sort of squeaky and friendly like a cuddly toy might be talking. Um, if it worked, it worked. If it didn't, tough. 
<laughs> After series one, I was slimming down so much, I was losing so much weight inside that fur skin that I thought to myself, no, besides which, I want to be seen rather than a furry toy wants to be seen. So I decided enough's enough. And I think they only cast uh, my uh, follow-up actor because he was already pre-shrunk. Um, I was just losing weight all the way through. So it was a health thing as much as anything else. I'm just trying to think when George appeared. Um, because George was another foil character. Um, <coughs> to, to, to give a little bit more depth and, um, and broadness to the character base for, for Rainbow. Uh, yes, I can't remember who played George. He's disappeared. He's gone straight out of my head. Never mind. There we are. These things happen. We filmed Rainbow in a studio that no longer exists. It was right down in Teddington on the River Thames. Uh, Teddington Studios, nice little studios. But I think now it's a block of flats. I'm just trying to remember what the filming schedule was like. I know we, we got on with it pretty speedily uh, because we had to, to, to get the, the episodes in across that day. So uh, it, uh, there were busy days, I must say. Um, yeah, that's all I can say about it, really. As I've said before, I couldn't see any script at all um, <coughs> inside that costume. And I think uh, our rehearsals were just uh, meant really to keep us on track of what the storyline was going to be. Um, as I said, a lot of it was improvised, and as long as we didn't go too far off beam, you know, we, uh, Pamela, our producer, if she accepted it, then that was what it was going to be. Out it went uh, in, into, the, into the public domain, as the saying goes. Do I have any special memories during the course of Rainbow? Well, the only special memory I have is of thirst, I think, and discovering that the costume that I was wearing was getting progressively damper as time went by, because Bundle, of course, had to be jumping up and down. He had to be the lively one. So I was uh, using an enormous amount of energy, uh, which, you know, was keeping me hot. Uh, and the salt tablets I had to have uh, <coughs> were administered very carefully. As I say, nowadays the health and safety regulations probably wouldn't have allowed that sort of thing to happen now. What am I doing now? Well, what are most actors doing now here in the UK? Waiting for work because what's happened over in America has actually infected all the work over here. They probably don't realise that, 
But over in the States, the, the strikes uh, have caused absolute disaster in Hollywood. And over here, so much less is actually being done. So at the moment, I'm a working actor without any work to do. Um, I, in my other hat, as the voice of K-9 in Doctor Who, I attend conventions and things like that, uh, which, which provides a little bit of fun for hopefully everybody, <laughs> which we'll see. Um, but there's no, well, shall we say, there's very, very much less real work right across the board. The entire infrastructure of the, the British um, television, film and television industry has been slowed down all to an almost standstill pace. Thank you very much for interviewing me.